He's scared of sharks. He loves to play football. He's still got two baby teeth. He's lost two teeth. He was bullied at school. In his pocket he had a hammer and a spanner and a lollipop. With his bright blue eyes, he looked out of his crumbling grey bricked little cottage. It was here in the middle of a forest that was filled with prickle-bearing trees. There were dead robins in amongst all of the branches. But he had travelled all of the way to come to this place to come and find what was his. It was a long, shiny, hard metal rope. The bricks of this cottage were rough and horrible. The ground was slippery, and he knew that there was a terrible wooden troll's bridge. There was a wolf that lived underneath with blood-stained teeth. What he didn't know was that the wolf had taken a bone hammer, a bone hammer to push that golden rope that belonged to him into the rough, hard bricks and make sure that it was a trap. The wolf wanted to eat the man, and it had lain that golden rope as a trap. Underneath the slippery, icy, wooden troll's bridge, the wolf was there, lifting his sharp claws, ready to pounce upon the man. But as the man pulled his hair away with his thin fingers, he saw that there was a bird a bird flying in the air, and in its beak it had some disgusting poisonous berries. And it didn't wait for a second, it threw them straight into the wolf's eyes. The wolf, who was ready to pounce, slipped into the rippling cold blue water of the river and screamed, Help me! Help me! as it clawed at the air. There was a helpful, happy fireman who wanted to help this wolf, for he loved animals. And he reached down with his long yellow gloves to pull the wolf out. But the man, the hero, he said first, Wolf, you must promise me that you will not try and eat me or anyone else. The wolf, who thought that it was going to drown in the river, promised that it would not eat him or anyone else. The hero's short, old blue trousers were starting to get dirty as he and the fireman used the rope to try and pull the wolf out of the water. The wolf stood there, its fur matted to its skin, gasping for breath. The man knew that it had promised and spoke to the wolf and said this, I think that what you need to do is clear this forest and you need to make sure you get rid of the disgusting poisonous berries and you can use the rope and use your bone hammer to do it. Sometimes if you go past that forest you might see the footsteps of a hero, the footprints of his round buckled shoes in the thick slimy mud, but you might also see a wolf cutting at the trees and the bushes with a smooth bone hammer. Even though it was spring, it was as dark as a locked cupboard with no key in the middle of this forest. Everyone knew that there was an angry wolf with small, sharp, blood-stained teeth that used to prowl around. All around him there were hard, rough, horrible, bent trees, and in the distance he could see that there were raspberry bushes. 
The berries looked sweet, but when he tasted them, they were terrible. Up and in amongst the boughs and the branches, he could see small dead robins in the smooth trees. On the ground, there were soft dead brown leaves in amongst all of the mud. Um, the wolf smashed the, the um, rope into the house window. He's trying to go on the roof and he's trying to smash um, the bricks, the roof hard ones, with bricks. The, the wolf was trying to attack the angry man. The wolf is carrying the smooth, bra broken bones on his back. The man was so good. When he stepped into the long metal golden trap, he went into the trees. The sad wolf didn't have any friends. The hungry wolf wanted a hammer.